This is the story of how a set of fungus models came to be and how you can make a set of your own. In 2017, Susan, the then Biodiversity Officer to, for Edinburgh City Council, had an ambition. She wanted to reach out to the rest of the staff within the council to highlight the importance of fungi. She wanted them to understand that fungi are just as important as any other form of wildlife and should be considered as part of any city planning. But how could she achieve this? She knew who to ask for help myself. So I asked, would this be a challenge? And she replied, oh yes. So what were the challenges? The council offices are right in the city centre, not a lot of green space about, so taking the staff on a foray wasn't really possible. There are a lot of council staff, so it wasn't practical to get them all outside. It was also September, so there may not have been any attention grabbing fungi around anyway. If we couldn't get them outside, how could we bring the fungi to them in their offices? Maybe the staff could be invited to see some fungal specimens somewhere in the building. But the place is a bit of a maze, and besides, everyone knows how difficult it is to find the time during the working day. So we had an idea. Forget the idea of fresh fungi, let's make giant models instead. Forget the staff coming to us. Everyone needs food. We could put a display at the entrance to the canteen. That way people could see the models and find out about fungi whilst on their way to lunch. The challenge now was which species of fungi would make good models? How would we choose? To get the attention of the people who were not already into fungi, we thought they should be colourful, they should have interesting facts associated with them, and they should be eye-catching and maybe a bit weird. So now I'm going to take you through the process of crafting one of those models we decided on. First, the model has to have a base, and here we used plasterboard cut to size. The base needs to be larger than the completed model to provide stability. Because the models reuse waste materials where possible, this plasterboard was salvaged. The edges of the plasterboard had to be sealed to stop it from crumbling. This was done using old newspaper glued on with wallpaper paste. Simple fungus models can be built directly onto the board, but because this one is going to be a bit more complex, the fungus and the base are made separately. This meant that a connector was needed to fix the model to the base. This was made from a length of sturdy cardboard tube fixed to the base with newspaper and wallpaper paste. The fungus model itself starts with a frame, this one using wire mesh, but other models were made using cardboard tubes, cardboard boxes and paper mache. The wire mesh is moulded into the shape of the fungus and the frame must be smaller than the finished model will be to leave space for the building of the outside parts. The wire frame is then covered over with strips of newspaper and wallpaper paste. Four or five layers of this are needed to form a good base for the next stage. Each layer must be left to dry thoroughly. A tip, to make it easier to see the difference between each layer, alternate the colour of the newspaper for each one. The model was then covered over with paper mache clay, a mix of toilet tissue, wall filler, PVA glue, linseed oil and flour mixed up with water. Models can be covered all at once or in sections. Now the surface of this one was smoothed off once the clay was applied and once the clay was dry the body of the fungus was finished. Can you guess which fungus it is yet to be? The next stage was to paint the model. The first coat was white with colour being applied afterwards. Different shades were used to give the model depth and a realistic look. These shades were mixed using only pink and white paint. The inside sections were painted in a dark colour. 
Painting complex models like this one can be a bit fiddly, so it's best done before the model is fixed to the base to make it easier to get into all areas. The last step is to fix the model to the base. This, was one, this one was wired onto the base and the joint covered over with paper mache clay. The final layers of paint were applied and the model was ready. This one is Clathrus ruba, the basket stinkhorn or red cage fungus. Here is a photograph of a real red cage fungus that we've managed to find. Can you see how closely the model resembles the real thing? Can you see the difference between the model and this real fungus? I can't. Other models made for the display include Phallus impudicus, Sarcoscypha ostriaca, Giastrum striatum, Cyathus striatus, and the infamous Claviceps purpurea. Each model had an accompanying information card to teach people about the species and, where possible, an actual specimen of the fungus to give context. The fungus display went down well at the council canteen. As the staff came down the corridor for lunch, they stopped to look at the models and there was a small team of fungus enthusiasts there to help them learn more. Hopefully, the staff at Edinburgh City Council are now a bit more aware of fungi and how amazing these organisms are. Thank you for listening.